everyone, welcome to this free lesson on absolute value equations. So this is just part one, so we're going to talk about the basics. So we're going to talk about things that look like these. So just as a reminder, pause the video to try the examples on your own. You can always rewind the video um, if you need an explanation a second time. And I do have free guided notes available if you want to follow along. So where I want to start here is I want to think about what are the solutions to the absolute value of x equals 5. So what solutions make sense for this, just thinking about it. Well, you probably think right away x equals 5. Most people think of that one. But there is another one, right? There's a second one, um, x equals negative 5. So those are the two solutions, although the way we think about it in math is we think about this solution or this solution. So we usually use an or when we give our solution sets. These would be the two solutions here. And if you're wondering why, so just the way the absolute value works, so if I take the absolute value of 5, that's 5. And if I take the absolute value of negative 5, that's going to be positive 5. So this actually highlights kind of uh, uh, the, the way that we solve these in general. So notice that um, to really get to the solution here, we had to consider kind of two possibilities, right? The positive and the negative one, because you know that the negative one will end up becoming positive from the absolute value. So um, you might want to write this down. I think this is very helpful to actually write this down so that you can remember it. So to solve absolute value equations, so what you're going to have is some expression. So it's we're going to call it P and then C is going to be a constant. So here is how you actually solve everything. You solve this type of equation by solving these pieces. So you break it up into two parts. You're always going to set that equation equal to c and then that equation equal to the negative c. So let's take a look at how to do one of these. And like I said, pause this and write this down if you need to. So for this equation, um, I'm going to break this into two cases. So first I'm going to have 2x plus 3 equals 9. And then the other case that I need to explore will be 2x plus 3 equals negative 9. So that follows right from what we were just talking about here. You've got the positive and the negative case. So same thing here. You have the positive and the negative case. And from here now you just solve like you normally would. So um, you'll just solve each of these. So I get this will equal 2x equals 6. Well, if I subtract 3 from here, I get 2 e 2x equals negative 12. And then I just divide everything by 2 to get x equals 3. That's one solution. Or the other solution would be x equals negative 6. And so then these would be your solution types. Um, depending on the homework system that you have, um, so sometimes homework systems want to see this in set notation. So sometimes they like to see it like this. So you refer to your own homework system or your teacher's wants or whatever. Um, if you're a student in my class, um, I'm fine with seeing solutions like this. Um, I think our homework system forces you to put brackets around it, though, so just a heads up on that. Okay, so now it's your turn. Pause the video and try these and hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to set this up again into my two cases. So I've got 3x minus 9 equals 6. And then I've got 3x minus 9 equals negative 6. So sometimes people want to do something because this is a negative, and that's not what our, our solution kind of tells us to do. The way to solve this is whatever this is, you leave it alone. Where you make your manipulations are outside of the absolute value. So um, I'll go ahead and I'll add 9 in both cases. So this is going to give me 3x equals 15 versus this one. This is going to give me... 3x equals 3, and then I can just divide everything by 3 in both cases to get x equals 5 or x equals 1. And those would be my two solutions. Now, um, for this one, same thing, right? So I'm going to take 7 minus 4x equals 3, and 7 minus 4x equals negative 3. And um, just for the sake of time, I'll just go ahead and show you the steps real quick. Okay. 
And so there are my two solutions. Um, so you've got all the work there. So just double check if you made a mistake, look through and see if you can find like a sign error or something like that. Okay, so now we wanna look at another type of equation. So I've got five X minus four plus two equals 13. So what must we do first? So what I wanna do is just remind you of that technique I was just telling you about um, with solving. So the thing about math is that math is extremely literal and it's so literal that our, our brains sometimes have trouble with it because we're not used to being so literal. There's a lot of gray areas, right? Um, but math does not usually have gray areas. So when we look at this, notice this is very clear about the form of our equations, right? It's this singular absolute value equals a number. This is, you need this format so that you can have this situation. So I bring all that up to say, this is not quite in that format, right? Because we have this plus two outside of the absolute value on this side. So you have to isolate the absolute value. So in this case, we have to subtract two. Okay, so now that we know that, let's go ahead and solve this. So first I'm gonna subtract two. And so then this really becomes the equation five X minus four equals 11. And from here, um, I can go ahead and solve as usual. So now I can just break it up into the two cases. And this will be five X minus four equals negative 11. And now you just solve as usual. So I'll go ahead and just show you what those steps are. And there are the two solutions. So the key, right, is that you have to first subtract this, and then once you get into this situation, then you can treat it as usual. So you cannot break this up until you have done that. So with that in mind, um, I have two exercises here for you to try, so um, go ahead and pause and try here. Okay, so first things first, we have to subtract the four. So we get three X minus six equals six, and now I can break this up into its two cases. So I get three X minus six equals six, and three X minus six equals negative six. And from here you can solve as usual, so I'll go ahead and show all those steps. And so here's the solution, X equals four or X equals zero. Okay, so moving on to this one, um, so we will have to play around with the fractions a little bit, but the first thing's first, it's still the same first step, right? So first I have to just subtract off that five. So now I get this one half X plus one third equals five, and now I can split it off into its cases. Now, we have fractions here, so in general, with fractions, we like to cancel them out. So just first notice, what is the LCD of all of my fractions? Well, the LCD of all fractions would be six. And so um, we've used this, this method before. I'll go ahead and post a link in the comments just um, of, of other cases where we've used this technique. Um, but so what you're gonna do here then is you're just gonna multiply every part of this equation by six. So not just the fractions, it has to be everything. So um, when I do that, so I have that the two divides into the six and will just leave me with three. I have that the three divides into the six and will just leave me with two. And so I can do that over here too. And now I can go ahead and multiply these together. So this becomes three X plus two equals five, and this is three, oh, sorry, not five, 30, my bad. Three X plus two equals 30, and three X plus two equals negative 30. And now I can solve as usual. So I'll go ahead and do that. And so these just left me with two fractional answers. I can't actually reduce them any farther, um, but these would be my two solutions, and then that would be it for that one. So. That's it for this video. Um, in the next video, we're gonna talk about some more complicated um, looking problems and then some special situations. So I highly recommend if you're good with this one, go watch the next one. Also, please like this video, 
comment with any questions or feedback, and share this channel and subscribe. Okay, guys, I'll see you next time.